Hello, it's Mr. Lim here, or as some call me, the Specialist Mathematics Magic Doctor. But this video is not about me, this video is about vectors, lines and planes in 3D space. An equation of a line, we have the vector form, parametric form and Cartesian form. Equation of a plane, also vector, parametric and Cartesian. Intersection between lines or lines that are parallel, coincident or skew. Intersection between a line and a plane or two planes. Angles between two lines, two planes or a line and a plane. Then distances between points and lines, points and planes, parallel lines, skewed lines, parallel planes. All right, so we're gonna split this into two videos. In the first video, that's this video, we'll look at some of these topics and we'll do so with no calculator. And in the second video, part two, we'll cover the remaining topics uh, with the help of our calculator. Okay, so let's start with the equation of a line. And the vector form is like this, a vector a plus t times vector d, where vector a is a vector from the origin to the line, that can be any point on the line, and vector d is a vector parallel to the line, again that can be any vector parallel to the line. But I also want to make clear the difference between the line here that this is defining and the vector d. So our students sometimes confuse the vector with the line, the vector parallel to the line. I mean, this vector d, so long as it has the same direction and same magnitude, would be the same no matter where in space that is. We could move this vector anywhere. Uh, well, the arrow didn't move, but... <laughs> we could move this vector anywhere and it would be the same vector. Whereas this line defined by r of t is fixed in space. And by substituting in different values of t, I'll get uh, different points on this line. So. This point A here might be, for example, when t is zero, uh, B might be when t is equal to one. You know, if I sub in t is equal to 37, I'll get another point on that same line. So let's jump into a basic example. We want to find the vector equation for a line passing through points P and Q. So if we draw a little diagram, we've got P and Q on the line, I'll owe the origin anywhere. And what we can do is OP, position vector of a point, on line and PQ vector parallel to the line. OP we're given 2, 1, 3. For vector PQ, well, from 2 to 5, we need to add 3. From 1 to 0, subtract 1. And from 3 to negative 3, we subtract 6. So there we are. That is the vector equation of a line through P and Q. Again, it's not unique because we could have used OQ for this position vector here, or infinite amount of other points along the same line and this direction vector again is not unique. It is going to be parallel though, so it'll be a scalar multiple of that same vector. Here's a slightly more difficult example. We have a line given by R of t, and the question is which of the lines below does not define the same line as R of t? So three of them do give the same line, one of them does not. I encourage you, if you think you understand, to pause the video now, have a go yourself. Assuming you've done that, what we want to do is check uh, for example, in this case, is this first vector a point on R of t? And is the second vector parallel to the direction vector 1, negative 2, 3? The direction vector is probably easier to check. In this case, uh, we can see if we multiply this vector by 2, we will get this vector here. So it is parallel. That part's fine. Uh, the next part, is this the position vector of a point on R of t? that we we'll probably have to solve a system of three equations. So three plus t equals four, zero minus two t equals negative two, and four plus three t is equal to seven. If they have a solution, and in this case they do, which is t is equal to one, then we find that this point is on the line and this vector equation r4 of t actually does give the same line as r of t. One of a, b, and c does not. I'll leave the answer in the description. Next, let's talk about the equation of a plane. And for the plane, the Cartesian form is the most universal and probably the most useful form. And this is ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. And the good thing about that form is the coefficients a, b, and c actually give us the normal vector. And pretty much any time we need to solve any problem involving the plane, you know, 90% of the time we're actually using that normal vector but I'd actually like to explain where it comes from. And it sort of comes from this form, r dot n is equal to a dot n. Now, what is this talking about? So r is basically uh, the position vector of our point in the plane, and a is one particular point in the plane. So let's say we have two points in the plane, a and b, o is the origin. If a and b are in the plane, then vector a, b must be perpendicular to the normal. 
So AB.N must be equal to zero. Now from that, vector AB is OB minus OA, and by breaking this up, we get OB.N is equal to OA.N. So it's this really nice fact that for any two points in the plane, uh, the scalar product or the dot product with the normal vector must be equal. And this is where this form comes from. It's actually where this form comes from here because R, our position vector R is like X, Y, Z. And the dot product of R with the normal vector is AX plus BY plus CZ. Now that must be constant because no matter which point in the plane we take, the scalar product with the normal must give the same constant. Uh, we also have another form, another vector form of the equation for a plane on the VCE specialist mathematics formula sheet. And it's this one here. So in that case, we have the position of a point in the plane and then two non-parallel vectors in the plane. And that form, think about that form again, it's really not unique. So you could have a bunch of different equations that actually give the same plane. And you would have to check a little bit like we did with the previous example with the line, are those two equations actually giving the same plane? So here is an example of where we want to find the Cartesian equation for a plane passing through three points. And generally what we'll do this is to find the normal vector. Like if we want to, there's no reason why we couldn't just sub these three points into our general Cartesian equation and solve a system of three simultaneous equations. But I think you'll see this method is going to turn out to be easier. So let's draw a little diagram. If we have points A, B, and C, the normal vector must be perpendicular to vectors A, B, and A, C. So we can find the cross product of A, B, and A, C, and that will give us a normal vector. For the cross product, I will use the I, J, K notation so we can refer to the formula on our formula sheet. And we want the, the determinant of this three by three matrix. So then we have three two by two determinants, uh, negative two plus three minus negative one plus two, and then negative three plus four. That would give us the normal vector as i minus j plus k, or one negative one one. This process of finding the cross product using this formula was on last year's exam one. It makes sense for them to ask you to do that when you don't have your CAS calculator to just work out cross product. Once we have the normal vector, we then have the coefficients of um, x, y, and z. Here we have one x minus one y plus one z. And the right hand side of the equation, we take any point in the plane dot product with the normal vector. So let's say we take O A dot N. Uh, we were given A above as 0, 1, 3. Take the dot product with 1, negative 1, 1. We should get 2. Uh, as a good check, we could also check if we do O B dot N or O C dot N, do we get the same constant? Because we should, right? <laughs> if we didn't, then something's probably gone wrong with the normal vector. All right, so practice those cross products for exam one. This example is using this alternative vector form, which is on our formula sheet. Find the values of A, B, and C, for which the plane 3x minus 2y plus z is equal to five can be expressed in this form. So A, B, and C here are coefficients inside this vector equation. Again, pause the video, have a go yourself, um, but I will go through this one. So we wanna make sure this vector here is a point on the plane. So how do we do that? Well, we can sub in a negative two one into our vector equation, three X minus two Y plus Z is equal to five. Uh, doing that, we can solve for A and we should get A is equal to zero. Now for these vectors here, we need to make sure that those are vectors parallel to the plane. Uh, that is perpendicular to the normal vector. So what we can do is take the dot product with the normal vector and make sure we get zero. So for this vector, zero B six, when we take the dot product with three negative two one, we get the equation uh, negative two B plus six equal to zero, which means B must be equal to three. We can do a similar thing for this vector here, dot product with the normal, let it equal to zero, and we should find that C is equal to one. Next thing we'll look at is the intersection between a line and a plane. For intersection, so finding the point of intersection, generally we're going to do these using simultaneous equations. So for this example, find the point at which the line given by R of T intersects with the plane given by X minus Y plus Z is equal to two. So I think the easiest way to do this is to use the parametric form for the line. We break up 
the vector equation to parametric form. So x equals 3 plus t, y equals negative 2t, and z is equal to 4 plus 3t. Then if we sub these three equations into x minus y plus z is equal to 2, we'll then only have one unknown, which is t. We can solve this equation for t. We get negative 5 over 6. And then we can sub that t value back into our three equations for our parametric form in order to find the coordinates of the point of intersection. Now, if we're doing that without a calculator, of course, we need to be careful with our negative fractions, etc. But I've checked that one, I think it's right. <laughs> All right, the last technique we'll look at for this video is the angle between a line and a plane. So for this one, what we want to do is use the scalar product of the vector along the line with the normal vector to the plane. So if we say let alpha be that angle between the line and the normal vector, then from a scalar product formula, we have cosine of alpha is equal to n dot d over length of n times length of d. Once we find that angle, we can then find the angle between the line and the plane by subtracting that one from 90 degrees, okay? Because the normal is 90 degrees to the plane. So here's an example which we can do without a calculator. Let theta be the angle between the line given by R of t and the plane with equation x minus y plus z is equal to two. Find sine of theta. And the reason we can do this without the calculator is because we're not asked for the actual angle, uh, we're asked for the sine of the angle. So the normal vector we have is 1, negative 1, 1, coming from our plane equation. And the direction vector d is going to be 1, negative 2, 3. Using our scalar product formula, we get on the top a 1 plus 2 plus 3. On the bottom, length of n is root 3, and length of d is going to be root 14. We can find the cosine of alpha is going to be 6 over root 42, or root 42 over 7. Now, here's the nice thing, is that the sine of theta the angle from the plane is actually equal to the cosine of alpha, the angle between the line and the normal vector. So the answer to our question, sine theta is just root 42 on seven. Okay, because the sine of theta uh, is cosine 90 minus theta, which is exactly cosine of alpha. So does a question like that on the VCAR samples, 2023 sample questions. And again, it makes sense to put something like that on exam one, because even that's not a nice exact value, we can still find the sine of the angle. Okay, we'll leave part one here. Uh, I'll do part two maybe in a couple of days, but I do have a few things to do around the house, mowing the lawn, uh, cleaning the kitchen, that sort of thing. So once that's done, do part two. <laughs>